Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the third and final episode of the Mother of Loyalty with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Now, for the dear viewers who are just tuning in for the first time, I advise to visit our YouTube channel at Imam Hussain 3 TV to view the previous episodes along with other playlists and other series revolving around various topics. Now, before I begin the episode, I would like to send my condolences to Imam Sahib al Asri wa Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance to the Ahl al Bayt and to you, my dear viewers, and to every single Muslim out there, especially our pious uh, Maraj, our pious scholars, on this very tragic occasion which marks the demise anniversary of our beloved lady Fatima al Kilabiya, also known as Ummul Banin. Now, <clears throat> in the previous episode, we discussed the importance of raising righteous children and why Al Abbas was the most distinguished son out of his three other brothers, younger brothers, uh, of course. And we also touched upon the relationship, the beautiful relationship between Al Abbas and Al Hussein and Al Abbas and Lady Zainab. Now, before I move on to today's topic, I want to touch, uh, touch upon something. Uh, which is also related to today. Uh, when Umm al-Banin, peace and blessings be upon her, gave birth to al-Abbas, Imam al-Hassan, Imam al-Hussein, uh, Lady Zainab, Umm Kulthum, all walked in to see their newly born brother. As soon as Umm al-Banin saw Imam al-Hussein, she got up and gave him the newly born. When Imam al-Hussein, as he was carrying al-Abbas, Al-Abbas opened his eyes and the first eyes, the first face that Al-Abbas saw was the face of Imam Al-Hussein alayhi salam. And honestly, when you first take the first look into the newly born child's eyes, you get to know that that individual will grow up to be the greatest person ever. From the first look, you look into the baby's eyes. However, after Imam Hussain was done with his little brother, who did Umm al banin give the second? Umm al banin gave Al-Abbas to Zainab salam. Now, I think you know where I'm going with this. First al Hussein and then Al-Abbas uh, and then Zainab salam. As soon as Zainab salam saw the eyes of Al-Abbas, the second person who well, Al-Abbas has just seen. He hasn't opened his eyes with, you know, looking at his mother, no. He first opened his eyes looking at al Hussein and then Zainab alayhi salam. This tells us something that's very beautiful. At the end, if we shift 34 to 35 years, this is when Al-Abbas alayhi salam, how old he was. On the day of Ashura, 34 and 35, the, la the second last face he saw, the second last eyes Al-Abbas saw were the eyes of Zainab alayhi salam before he went to go get water for the orphans and for al Hassan alayhi salam. Now Zainab, you know, the, the, the long speech uh, between them went on, Al-Abbas left. When Al-Abbas went to grab water, Imam al-Hussain alayhi salam kept his eye on the flag of Abu al-Fadl. That's why they call him the flag barrier. Now, how was this correlated and how was this related to Umm al banin We'll get to touch upon right now. Al-Abbas alayhi salam is an individual who possessed the highest level of patience out of, you know, the, the ordinary, of course not Ahl bayt but out of anybody out of the Imams of Ahl bayt alayhi salam. Because honestly, when he reached the river of Al-Alqami, as he was getting the pouch filled with water, he felt the coolness of the water. And he went to drink. He began to speak to his soul. What did he say? He says, O oh soul, be patient. Your master Hussein is thirsty, yet you want to enjoy the coolness of the water. Al-Abbas could have easily drank the water because in his mind, he knew that he was taking water to Hussein. So nonetheless, water was going to get to Al Hussein in his head. But yet, he says, how can I drink when my master Hussein 
is thirsty. So he let the water go. And the last set of eyes he saw were the eyes of Imam al Hussein, peace and blessings be upon him. When Abbas fell with no hands, a, 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 an arrow pierced through one eye, the water pouch has been pierced. Imam al Hussein comes to him, and the last eyes and the last face that Imam Hussain, that Al Abbas saw was the face and eyes of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Now, this tells us something. Al Abbas throwing the water, being so determined to bring the water, emanates from who? Emanates from what? It all emanates from his mother, Umm al Banin alayhi salam, who Imam Ali al Talib said, "I want a patient lady," and this characteristics characteristic of being patient was sent down through Al Abbas alayhi salam, who was so thirsty. And the water was available for him, yet he did not drink. Tonight, insha'Allah, I want to touch upon a few points. Number one, why did Umm al banin not leave with Imam al Hussein and the caravan of Imam Hussein uh, to Karbala? Number two, what, to what extent was Umm al, um, um al banin patient? We touched upon it a little bit in the previous episode, but I want to continue it today and see to what extent did Umm al banin have patience. Number three, what is the correlation between Umm al banin and mourning sessions over the martyrdom of Imam Hassan alayhi salam? What is the correlation between the two? Inshallah, we'll get to touch upon that. But Imam Hussain alayhi salam, you know, the main reason why Umm al banin stayed back was that Imam Hussain alayhi salam had a small child with the name of Fatima al-Sughra. Now, Umm al-Baneen could not, Imam Hussain could not take her uh, with him to Karbala because she was ill. So Umm al-Baneen stayed behind to take care of that child, to see whatever she needs and serve her. She serves Imam Hussain and the daughter of Imam al Hussain. This is to the extent that Umm al-Baneen had love for the Ahl al-Bayt salam. Why else did she stay back? Abel Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. We all come, we always call Abel Fadl. A lot of people don't actually know that Al Abbas had a son called Fadl. That's why they call him Abel Fadl, the father of Fadl. And he had another younger child with the name of Abdullah, or according to other narrations, Ubaidullah. So Umm al Banin stayed behind to look after the kids, to take care of the kids. Ever since the caravan of Imam Hussain alayhi salam left Medina, Umm al banin would constantly ask the people who come into Medina, tell me news about my son Hussein. Someone tell me something about my beloved master and son Imam Hussein alayhi salam. A lot of people would say, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. Whenever someone enters Medina, she would send someone to go and ask him. And no one has news of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Until one day, when Bishr ibn Hadlam walks into Medina and he started calling out, I have news from Karbala, I have news from Imam al Hussein. Everyone gather around, everyone gathered around him. They want to hear the news. What is going on? You know, right now, if someone goes on, if something goes on around the world, we just turn on a TV. But back then, there were messengers, there were poets like Bishr ibn Hadlam. So everyone gathered around to hear the news. Umm al banin as soon as she heard Bishr say, I, want, I, I have news of Imam Hussain or from Karbala, she comes running with a child. She was holding a child in her arms, the child of Abel Fadl Abbas. She comes running. And then she hears Bishr saying those lines. In yesterday's episode, just to touch upon the correlation of the patience. Everything I'm saying leads up to the patience of Umm al-Banin, the patience of Umm al-Banin. In the previous episode, I narrated the story how Imam Ali ibn Talib Islam rolled up the sleeve of his son, Abu al-Fadl, and began to kiss his hands and then told Umm al-Banin why that in the future those hands will be cut off. Umm al-Banin was patient. She's like, if it's for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Islam, and for the sake of defending his brother Imam Hussein, then 
so be it. Let his hands get cut off. Let him be sacrificed for the son of Rasulullah, the grandson of Rasulullah. Now, Bishr has just came in. And he is saying, I have news of Imam al Hussein and what will happen. But to what extent was Umm al Banin patient? Could she bear the news of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? Insha'Allah, we'll get to touch upon that, but after the short break, so stay tuned. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you to the second part of today's episode and I do send my condolences to Sahib al Asr wa Zaman, to you, my dear viewers, and to everyone across the world because the life of Umm al Banin, the sacrifices that this individual, this great characteristic and lady, she gave to Islam and she gave for the Ahl Bayt alayhim salam, deserves for us to ponder upon her life and learn every aspect from her life. I know I am not fully you know, giving uh, the credit that she deserves, but inshallah, I hope to fulfill the information that is required to know uh, about the life of Umm al -Banin. Peace and blessings be upon her. Now before the break, we did touch upon uh, a lot of things regarding uh, the correlation between uh, Umm al -Banin and Majalis. A little bit we touched upon that. Uh, we'll get to touch upon it more uh, near the end of the episode. <clears throat> but we got to the question, to what extent did Umm al -Banin's patient patience last? Bishr has just entered Medina and he is telling everyone, I have news of Imam Hussain, I have news from Karbala. Umm al -Banin, everyone gathers around. He says to the people of Medina, he says, Bishr, he's a poet. He says, all the residents of Yathrib, there is no place for you here anymore. Hussein has been martyred and my tears will forever flow. Now, hearing this, everybody got the news that Imam al-Hussein is martyred. Umm al-Banin goes up to Bishr. She says, tell me news about my master and son, Imam Hussein." Bishr got confused. He looked at everybody, says, what's going on? I'm saying, Hussein has just been martyred in Karbala. And this lady is asking me, tell me about Hussein. The people tell him, oh Bishr, this is Umm al-Banin. The love and devotion that Umm al-Banin had towards Ahl al-Bayt, towards Fatim al-Zahra, and especially towards Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam was publicly known to everyone. Everyone knew that Umm al-Banin loved Imam Hussain more than she loved herself and more than she loved her children. So Bishr became emotional. He thought to himself, how am I going to inform this lady about Imam Hussain being murdered in the most brutal way? So he began to tell one by one. And what's so interesting about his, his line of poetry, he says, oh, the residents of Yathrib, Yathrib is modern day Medina. Yathrib was, a, was an area where Jews used to reside in. And he used this Yathrib 
is because the people of Medina, how they warmly welcomed Prophet Muhammad, now are receiving the news of the martyrdom and the murder of his grandson, Imam al Hussein. So he wants to see how will they react to this incident. So he begins to tell them, Mulbaneen. He says, May Allah grant you patience and may Allah reward you for the death of your son, Abdullah. She says, I don't care about Abdullah. Tell me about Hussein. He says, May Allah reward you for the loss of Ja'far. She says, Tell me about Hussein. Then he says, May Allah grant you patience and reward you for the loss of Uthman. She says, all of them are ransomed for Imam Hussein. Tell me about my master and son, Imam Hussein. He says, may Allah grant you. He, be he begins to tear up. And he tells her, her, may Allah grant you patience and may Allah reward you for the loss and martyrdom of your beloved son, Al-Abbas, the moon of Bani Hashim. Umm al as I mentioned, had a child that she was carrying in her arms. She let go of the child, the child falls and she falls with the child cr crying. She says, you have shattered my heart. Tell me about my son Hussein. Bishr then his emotions just collapse. He starts to cry and he says, may Allah grant you patience and may Allah reward you for the loss and martyrdom of Imam al Hussein. Now Umm al Banin goes into a depression mode. Her beloved son and beloved master Imam al Hussein, they tell her, Umm al Banin, the moon of Bani Hashim just died. She said, No, my life is Imam al Hussein. Everything that I am is Imam al Hussein. Nothing matters other than Imam al Hussein. She falls onto the ground, she collapses, begins to cry, begins to lament Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. What does she do next? Umm al banin gets up, this is very heart shattering. Umm al banin gets up and where does she go? She goes to the house of Zainab alayhi salam. Zainab has, jo has just gotten back from captivity. She told her maid, anyone that knocks on the door, do not, do not let them in until they have a common calamity with us. Until there's, there's a common calamity between us, then let them in. Umm al banin goes and knocks on the door, the maid comes out. She says, my master Lady Zainab said that I cannot let anyone in until they have a common calamity. Umm al banin looks at her and she says, I am Umm al banin The maid goes back, go, goes back in to Lady Zainab. She says, there's a lady at the door that says she is Umm al banin She has a common calamity. She says, yes, let her in. This is the individual who I should console with. As soon as the two see each other, Umm al banin calls out, O oh my son, O oh my master, Hussein, what it is a disaster after you. What a disaster it is after you. Zainab then replies to Umm al-Banin. What does she say? Beautiful comments between the two. They shatter the hearts. Zainab alayhi salam, she says, O oh brother Abbas, what a disaster it is after you. Then Umm al-Banin realized that something has changed. With, with Zainab. She began to doubt. She says, is this Zainab al-Alawiyya? Is this the Alawid Zainab? Zainab, daughter of Imam Ali? What does Zainab say? She says, do not say Zainab al-Alawiyya, but say Zainab al-Masbiyya. Do not say Zainab, the daughter of Ali. Say Zainab, the captive, from the calamities that she faced. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt السلام, tell us that after Ashura, the calamities of Ashura were great. They struck Ahlul Bayt, they shook Ahlul Bayt, but the calamities that happened after Ashura are what really hurted Ahlul Bayt the most. 
What happened to Zainab alayhi salam and Ummul Banin and the rest of the captives? So she says, do not say Zainab the daughter of Ali, say Zainab the captive from what happened to her. Ummul Banin and Zainab began, they sat around and established the first majlis, home majlis, home lamentation gathering. There were majalis b before even Imam Hussein was born. But a majlis, the first majlis was established in the uh, palace of Yazid, but the first home majlis was established by Umm al Banin and Lady Zainab alayha salam. After everything has happened, Umm al Banin gets up. She leaves everyone in a depressed mood uh, with, with, with her heart just not even broken, shattered with the news of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Where does she go next? She goes to Jannat al baqiyah And there, she makes another grave, resembling who? Resembling Imam al Hussain alayhi salam. She sits beside the grave every day and night and laments over Imam al Hussain alayhi salam. Cries for days and days. And then after she's done at night, she goes back home and she has a gathering for, for women. Umm al banin placed a huge emphasis on the importance of establishing majalis for women. Because such gatherings, when women get together, narrate the story of Ahl al-Bayt, especially the story of Umm al banin Zainab and Rabab and Ruqayya and, and uh, Sakina and all of them, they will turn into the ladies that really Ahl al-Bayt wants. So she gets a gathering and begins to lament over Al Hussein every night. And every day she's at the grave that she built for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. What's also interesting, and she did this until she died. She died in the 64th year after just so a couple of years, two or three years after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And she did this until she died. What's also heartbreaking, and you know, this, this information really gets to the bottom of the heart. On a day of judgment, it is narrated that out of the loyalty and respect of Fatima al Zahra to Umm al Banin, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad shows her respect and shows her loyalty to Umm al Banin for what Umm al Banin did to the children of Fatima al Zahra. What does Fatima al Zahra do? She raises the hands of Abdul Fadl Abbas alayhi salam and she asks Allah to be the judge between the one who cut off these hands and Fatima al Zahra. In return, what does Umm al-Baneen do? In return, Umm al-Baneen picks up the shirt smeared with the blood of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and she says, O oh Allah, be the judge between me and the individual who smeared the blood of your beloved grandson of your beloved Prophet and be the judge between us. Out of, I mean, let us comprehend this. Fatima al Zahra showing her, her love to Umm al Banin, Umm al Banin showing her love to Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam through this way. Now, lastly, before I conclude, I want to touch upon a few points. Number one, let us strive towards holding on to our faith as strong as possible. Let us strive so hard to continue serving Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as -salam. Let us strive to spread the story of Umm al -Baneen. It is her tragic martyrdom. And it's our responsibility to continue sharing the knowledge of Umm al -Baneen, sharing what she did for Islam, how she was a, as a daughter, how she was as a mother, as a wife, and as a loyal lover to Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as -salam. 
Lastly, I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to continue serving Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.